And we are back with the third segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this third segment, we are going to be talking about what is next for the Dallas Mavericks and where they should go, what they should do, what should be the next move for them, this, that, and the other, everything that you need to know, everything that you know um, that needs to be said, and obviously, I mean, like, if you are, I think, you know, the basic thing to do when you make it all the way to the finals is to try and run it back again. Like, just try. May, like, get a little bit better, but at the same, but you got to run it back again, especially with um these, like, two players. Now, they were, I wouldn't really say they were missing another piece. I personally think they were just, they just needed the team to respond, and the team just wasn't, responding i feel like maybe the nerves of being in the finals for the first time in most of their careers was getting to a lot of the players and i not to mention the celtics roster as a whole is just you know it's just in ridiculously strong and again it's literally like i think it's one of the best rosters since the 2017 and 2018 warriors now i never i didn't say that before because uh, I needed them to win a championship just to be sure because it's like we we we've seen the story from the Celtics year and year and year and year and year in and year out with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and here is the final this is the first time that they ended up winning the title so this is by far like one of the best uh, rosters that we've seen since the Golden State Warriors and now just looking through this article and you know because obviously they still have to go through free agency they still have to worry about salary cap because. Luca and Kyrie, they're most likely going to demand a lot of money. And will that give them enough options and enough space to sign new players? We'll see. So Dallas, they reached the finals for the first time in their 13 in 13 years. And um, while they ended off on a sour note, they ended up, you know, they ended up beating the Clippers, the Thunder, and the Timberwolves, and they entered the finals as underdogs to the Boston Celtics, and they ended up winning the series in five. But there is obviously a bright side. Dallas can easily run it back in 2024 and 2025 behind Luka and Kyrie and several other key players still under contract. While changes may be coming, the Mavs certainly don't need a makeover in the summer, at least least according to the article. Now, the one of the issues is salary cap. While the Mavericks are limited in ability to make any big moves in free agency because of salary cap, they don't need to make any big moves really. Like Dallas already has 13 players under contract for next season. The combined total due is 174.9 million, which is just above the projected 172 million luxury tax. As a result, The Mavs should still be able to bring in a free agent with the 5.2 million taxpayer mid-level exception. Now, that's not really going to move the ball much, like, for the team, but regardless, like, you know, the problems with this team wasn't the fact that they didn't have enough stars. It's the fact that they didn't have enough team basketball being played. I guess you could say, because in my personal opinion, that offensive scheme, unless your role players are going to be as consistent as um, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson from the field, you are not going to be able to run that systematic offense as efficiently as you want and win a title while doing it, because you are reliant on a lot of factors. You're reliant on your individual players being able to score on whoever is guarding them. You're also relying on your role players to know where to be at. You're also on your role players to hit your shots, on the um, on your main player to predict and read the defense. All of these factors are sort of being played in, and it's like, not to mention all the pressure being put on, you know, the one or the two ball handlers that you have on your team. And just f- forcing Luka and forcing Kyrie to do God knows what with the ball, every single possession is not only incredibly difficult to maintain for a long period of time, it's also inefficient. 
like um it could be it could end up being inefficient for them and it could end up putting a lot of pressure on them not to mention the fact that it could also be just more detrimental to the team because it's like you need those two players to play well it's not like you know other players would be able to get into a rhythm because the whole offense flows within those two players and you need to get a lot more team basketball going on it can't be that the the Dallas Mavericks offense is just like you know stagnant when Luka or Kyrie doesn't have the ball that was a very big problem in the in the entire series and it really boiled down to stop Luka or stop Kyrie you stop the Dallas Mavericks and that cannot happen because it's like not only is that you know difficult to maintain offensively but you also have to think about it defensively I mean Luka and Kyrie as you know as guards as individual guards they already are notorious for being bad at defense like that's just that's a given but on top of that, wasting all of their stamina on the offense, it's only going to make playing defense more difficult for them because they, are going, they aren't going to have enough breath and they aren't going to have enough stamina in their lungs to be able to focus on just playing, um, to be able to focus on the offense and focus on the defense. This is a problem that we've seen LeBron and several other players have where it's like, you know, we see LeBron's defense sort of decline, not really decline, but like, he becomes a little bit lazier on defense because it's like you you need him on offense and he needs his stamina for offense so he can't be running out and doing all of these kinds of things on the defensive side and making an impact on the defensive side because you need the impact that he has on the offensive side now more so on the um on like on the free agency it's going to be difficult for them to bring in another um another player in a free agency which is why i feel like the main key for this Mavericks team to being successful is revamping the offense just a little bit that includes a little bit more of the players so that the other players aren't just standing there waiting for the ball to come their way. It's not consistent. It's not reliable. While the, while the Boston Celtics, while they were able to do it with Jalen Brown and, um, and Jason Tatum, while they were able to do it, they had a good enough team to sort of they had a much better team than the Dallas Mavericks had because while Jason Tatum was struggling throughout a majority of the series, the rest of the players were stepping up. They were hitting their shots. They were making their plays. Drew Holiday was making plays. Chris Epps was making plays. All of these other players on the team were making plays. It wasn't just Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, which is like, you know, one of the big reasons why I think this team and this roster as a whole is just, you know, it's just that good. It's, um... Now, that's just one of the issues for this team, the, the free agency part. Now it's the contract decisions that they have to worry about. Now, from a rotation perspective, Derek Jones Jr. is the Mavericks' lone player with an expiring contract, and he earned $2.7 million this season, held a starting job, and enjoyed an efficient, productive run in the playoffs. He deserves a raise, but will Dallas end up giving him that raise? That is the question. Markeith Morris, he played just 216 minutes in 26 appearances during the regular season, did not hit the floor in the playoffs. Are they going to keep him on the roster? That's still to be decided. Dante Exum has no guaranteed money for next season, and Jaden Hardy is guaranteed 400000 of his $2 million. Both of those decisions will be made in June, but they are inexpensive to keep. Now, if the Mavericks want to free space, trading Tim Hardaway Jr. on his expiring $16.2 million deal is likely going to be the first choice from Dallas. And I personally think they should get rid of Tim Hardaway Jr. He provides nothing for the team on the offensive side of the ball, as well as provides nothing for the team on the defensive side of the ball. I've seen him in I've seen him on New York. And while he was valuable for Dallas for a little bit, I don't think they need him now. They need to get rid of him and they need to bring in some other, not a star player, but some other, you know, player, maybe like a little, maybe other, other players, not just one, if they even could bring other players. And it, it depends what they do in the free agency market. But I really feel like they should bring other players, not just player other players like just bringing in one another option isn't going to make the team any better
Like, they should avoid from getting a um, another big-time free agent on their roster. They should avoid it completely. This problem happened with Brooklyn. This problem happened with L.A. This problem happened with Phoenix. It's happened with every team that um, Kevin Durant has been a part of recently, along with, you know, it happened with LeBron and the Lakers. Shouldn't happen with the Dallas Mavericks. Learn from those mistakes. Don't do that again. Now... The free agents that they should probably pursue, I feel like Royce O'Neal, he might be a really good option for the team. And according to this article, it says that he's a pretty good 3 and D option as well. He was a good option for the um the Celtics, not the Celtics, the Suns. There's also, um, you know, there's also the possibility of signing a couple of veterans, you know, like Chris Paul, maybe even Kyle Lowry. They both have rings and they might want to chase for more. Um, Cameron Payne is also a pretty good, is a pretty good, um, uh, steal, not to mention Cam Reddish. Those are potential options for free agency, but again, they aren't going to be big time free agents, which is why this Dallas Mavericks team, they need to be able to revamp their offense just a little bit to sort of make it so that that way their offense isn't just completely Luka and Kyrie. That is, I feel like the big next step. For Dallas because they if they were able to if the team was able to produce as efficiently as they could in every single one of these games that they because they played I can't really say that the team played rather well throughout a majority of the postseason because it was really just Luka and Kyrie doing most of the work nine out of ten times but if they were to find you know other options on the team that could give them the boost in scoring that they need like as a team however not just you know and in, as an individual player then that would help the Dallas Mavericks I mean in the one game that they were able to win not only was their defense very very solid but the rest of their role players they were much more solid as well Hardaway Jr he ended up getting 15 points Dante Exum ended up getting 10 Derek Lively ended up getting 11 and, you know, it was just a much better performance coming in from the bench as well. The bench had 54 points compared to some of the other previous games where the bench would only score like, you know, 16. They scored only 16 in game three. And the bench, let me see, they only scored nine in game two. And then the bench in game one, they only scored, let's see, um, well, they scored 20 in game, in game one. But overall the the bench just wasn't there for this um for this Dallas Mavericks team and that was one of the biggest problems and it's just you need like you need the rest of like you know the rest of the team and you need them to be consistent like i'm not asking for you know 20 points coming in from the from a a bench player no if if all of them were to get like you know maybe like 7 or like 10 at least you can't even you can't be mad at that that is very consistent and that will definitely help the they just need to produce more as teammates that's really the big thing so with that we are out of time for this third segment that's what i think is next for dallas they're definitely going to run it back it makes no sense not to run it back so now we will go ahead and go into the fourth segment which is going to be about whether or not Jalen, um, Jason Tatum was robbed of the finals MVP because, you know, Jalen Brown, he was able to win the finals MVP. So we're just going to talk a little bit about that right after this short break. Be sure to stay tuned. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC. To access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news, subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows, available everywhere podcasts are found. 